News Center 7's Jim Otte reports. I'm Jim Otte of the State House in Columbus, where the governor is adding his support. You literally are a witness to history. Jim brings certainly a journalistic prowess. He brings to it a perspective and a lens. The goal here is to get 100% of the Ohio delegation behind it and then see if they can get this passed. In Dayton, Jim Otte. Jim Otte. Jim Otte. Jim Otte. I'm Jim Otte at the State House. He helped guide me through really what the community wanted to hear about what we do. For the I-Team in Columbus, Jim Otte, New Center 7. In Columbus, Jim Otte, New Center 7. Respected journalist, admired colleague, adored family man. I'm talking about our good friend and colleague, WHIO's iconic State House and investigative reporter, Jim Otte. Jim is retiring after more than 43 years in radio and TV news, the last 33 right here at News Center 7. Let's take a look back now at Jim's career and the side of his life most people don't know. Jim Otte grew up on Cincinnati's west side in the close-knit community of Montford Heights with his parents, two older brothers, and younger sister. His favorite hometown lunch, yeah, so Skyline three-way, still runs through his veins. As a matter of fact, you know, we used to say in our family, when you go to have your blood drawn, at the, a little bit of chili comes out. <laughs> as a boy, he loved being outside, but not so much the summers he spent working in the family's home building business. I was a carpenter. I was a, a crane operator, a truck driver, a roofer, an incredible amount of work. And I don't know how many times I said to myself, I've got to do something else. He found it at LaSalle High School, where he was instantly drawn to the TV studio and learned to shoot video. Went to Miami University, and we really didn't have much in terms of television, but they had a radio station, and that's how I got into radio. Jim worked at radio stations in Oxford and Hamilton before going to Columbus and launching his long career covering the Ohio State House. This is taken in January of 1983, and I, you may not recognize me because no mustache and a lot of hair. Although he dipped his toe in TV while working for Ohio Public Radio. Justice Brown has mailed out stacks of newspaper clippings about problems within the court to radio and TV stations all around Ohio at state expense. Do you need a ride to the polls? He didn't make the full jump until 1988. And these two campaigns are leaving nothing to chance. When WHIO-TV had an opening for a statehouse reporter. What's great about the statehouse is you have an opportunity to get access to all the people. You can literally just walk up to people in, in the hallway and say, hey, whatever happened to this issue you were working on, they would give you an update, presto changeo, instant story. Jim's career took him through eight governors, as well as members of Congress, senators, and presidents. And he never shied away from asking the tough questions of even the biggest political figures. For the last six months, the governor of Ohio was talking about you in a very negative way. Well, it's very disappointing. Jim committed himself to fair and unbiased reporting. You have to approach it in a manner that leaves everybody guessing. And I try, try really hard to just play it down the middle. And if there were ever any question about his ability to do that, just ask elected officials on both sides. I have no idea how Jim <laughs> Body votes. I, I have absolutely no clue. I don't even know how Jim really feels about an issue, right? I think he really, you know, moves through issues in a sense of like wanting to make sure the public understands it, you know, from his weekly Sunday reports to making sure they get to the crux of the issue uh, quickly, frankly, which makes him great for TV journalism, really. Look, he, he's a straight shooter. Adi's going to call it as he sees it. And uh, he, again, is, is really going to, I think, put it in perspective. Welcome back to this special edition of WHI Reports. Thank For the last 15 years, Jim has also hosted our weekly public affairs show, WHIO Reports. I think Jim has been so sensitive to the issues within the community. Shannon Isom, the CEO of YWCA Dayton, was a frequent guest and part of the award-winning show that brought together community leaders in the aftermath of the Oregon District mass shooting. And I think that was uh, not only smart, uh, but it was important to our healing. Jim Otte for the Food Bank team is a hunger hero. Michelle Riley is grateful for Jim's spotlight on the Food Bank, especially its efforts within hours of the 2019 tornadoes. Jim was instrumental in making sure that we were boots to the ground right away. And he did a great job 
of spending time making sure that the public understood the chronology of what was going on. Two or three dozen people here. Jim's body of work spans a wide range of topics. From the removal of the low dam in the Great Miami River, to the testing of self-driving cars at a world-renowned facility in Logan County. TRC attracts car companies from around the globe. Jim even traveled to the Arizona desert. When the CBS TV show Survivor first hit it big, he brought back an incredible series of stories with a real-life survival expert. I can cut it down and I can make fire with it. This is all you need to get that fire started. A small magnifying glass. The great outdoors is where Jim is his happiest. Camping, canoeing, kayaking, hiking, a love of nature he's shared with his wife of nearly 40 years. For Cindy, it's an acquired taste. But when their three children, Liz, Kate, and Jack, have embraced. I think most of our vacations were in a tent somewhere, you know, exploring national parks or, um, just different, different places. Now an avid rock climber, Kate Otte says her dad taught her so many important life lessons. Definitely a work ethic and having projects and hobbies. I 100%, I, I don't feel like I learned how to write in school. I learned how to write from my dad. Hi, good morning. The last year and a half of Jim's career brought the COVID crisis. That, that should be a warning to you, hey, I need to get a test. Which meant daily news conferences with the governor and health leaders and protests over lockdowns and mask mandates. Like we spent the majority of our time at the state house, like I am here, masked up. Among his plans for retirement. I've got a long, long list of places, my bucket list of places to go to, mostly for canoeing and kayaking, mostly for camping. And he has another list of updates needed to his and Cindy's nearly 100-year-old house. Some of it I'll have to do and some will have to be contracted out. But I know just enough to be very dangerous. <laughs>my hope is that my toughest deadline is getting the grandkids to soccer practice at the right time, at the right place.